In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on live data in Android. So I have a previous video where we talk about retrofit in its role, where that consumes JSON and then, and, and then it makes available a stream of objects from that JSON. And we take that stream of objects and we make it available to our activity through live data attached to a view model. So in this video, we're going to continue the story and we're going to look at it from the side of the activity. And one nice thing about live data is number one, it's observable. So in other words, our activity can look at it. But the other nice thing about live data is that it also adheres to the Android activity lifecycle so that when our activity pauses, it automatically stops looking at the stream of data. So we're, go we're going to take a look at this. So in, a, in another previous video, we designed this layout, this look and feel for our initial screen. And we have an autocomplete here called autocomplete plant name, ACT plant name. What we want to do is we want to take the JSON stream that we've been consuming, which contains plant names, and we want to use that as the feed of data for the autocomplete plant name. So let's go to our project. Actually, let's click on the uh, main fragment. Let's take a look at this on activity created. You see that it already has a connection to our main view model, and that's something that was created when we initialized this project. If we take a look at the main view model, we see that it has a variable of type plants, uh, sorry, variable name plants of type mutable live data. Mutable live data means live data, which we just talked about. Mutable means it can be changed. In other words, it's read and write. And then the type of data that the mutable live data is holding is an array list of plant objects or plant data classes, which we also made. So you see that our fragment already has access to this view model. Now what we need to do, first of all, let's take away the to do. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to observe the mutable live data that is exhibited through that plants variable. The plants variable wasn't private, it's public, so we can access it. So we'll just say view model dot plants. And now we can say dot .observe. And we don't want observe forever, we want observe. And you'll see a few signatures here. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we need to pass in a reference to the class that we're currently in. And then we're going to do kind of like a, a little uh, inline function or a lambda for the observer. So we'll do uh, open paren. And then we'll say this, which is the owner. And then we'll say observer and then open curly and close curly and we'll go ahead and implement just like so observer open curly close curly now um, I know that syntax is a little bit goofy if you're not used to inline functions or anything like that but let's just simplify it a little bit and say any time that plants changes the logic that we want to have happen on that change will happen right here in this highlighted blue area and when we initially load the data, that will be a change effectively. So that will kind of like be a way to initialize what we're doing. Now, uh, within here, I'm going to say plants and then dash greater than symbol. And then we'll say ACT plants, uh, sorry, ACT plant name dot set adapter. Okay, couple things. Uh, note that I just typed ACT plant name. Now, what is ACT plant name? Well, you might remember that's the name of that autocomplete text that we saw on our layout. ACT plant name, just as you see right there. In the old days of Android, we had to do this thing called find view by ID, and we had to pass in a constant to get a reference to that field from the layout to the activity or the fragment under the covers. Nowadays, they have these things called synthetics with Kotlin, where you see it will actually kind of say, hey, I think I know what you do, here, what you want to do here. Uh, I can help you out. If you just add this import, I will figure out what ACT plant name is. So that gives us a reference to that autocomplete text that's on our form. Now, an adapter, what an adapter does is it takes a collection, uh, something like an array list, and it gives it a look and feel that can be used in something like a dropdown, or in this case, an autocomplete. So what we're doing now is we're creating a new array adapter. And we'll say, okay, open paren, and then we'll say array adapter, and then open and close paren, we'll fill in the details in just a moment. Now remember in Kotlin, we don't need the new keyword. If this were Java, it would look something more like this, but uh, we know this is actually creating a new array adapter. 
Now for array adapter, we have uh, three arguments we need to pass to it. One is the context, and context kind of represents the sandbox of where our application is living. There are several ways to do this. We can say get context, and then that will oftentimes just resolve itself to context like so, although many times we have to do a double exclamation to essentially assert uh, nullability on this. And then we'll say uh, the layout that we want to apply. This is a bit of a goofy syntax, but we're just saying how do we want these uh, how do we want these objects to appear when they appear in this autocomplete text? For autocomplete, the layout is very simple. You're typically just going to have text as opposed to a recycler view where you might have maybe a picture and a link and something like that. So for an autocomplete, we will typically use the same layout all the time. R dot layout dot support simple drop down i uh, sorry simple spinner drop down item that's fine after that we need to give it the collection that we want to show in this in this autocomplete text well guess what let's kind of think about lambdas again remember what we have here is input and then what we have on the right of the arrow sign is output now this is one of those one argument style lambdas where basically we're observing this collection of plants so that collection is what is getting passed into this lambda here. So this is the array list of plants. Now on the right side of the arrow, we have to say, how do we want to use that? Well, we want to use that to populate this array adapter. So we say plants, just like so. The red lines go away. And now we can take a look at the types. And I do want to give a little clarification to something I said earlier. If I hold and press over plants, uh, we'll see that that's immutable live data. Now, if we hold and look at this plants and this plants, it is slightly different. It's the array list that that mutable life data is holding. So essentially the job of the observer is to observe on that mutable life data, pull out what it's observing on, and then provide it to our Lambda here. Now we do have one more thing that we need to do. Uh, we need to go back to our main view model and this fetch plants function is never invoked. So we're going to do this uh, with an initialization. We'll say, actually I'll tell you what, we'll do init. And this init block that you see here, kind of think of it like a constructor. It's basically what do we want to do when we initialize our object. So I'm just going to call the fetch plants method. And I have it right now, I have it actually calling fetch all under the covers. So I'll just pass in the letter E uh, just as dummy text. Now in this specific version of retrofit in Kotlin, if I were to run now, I would get an exception when I try to start my program. So we have to make a change to build.gradle file. This might not be the case in future versions of this library. So just a note there. Let's go ahead and double click and go to build.gradle. And give us a little bit of space here. And up above, you'll see there's this section for Android when we have uh, default config, we have build types, we have Android. We need to add one more we need to specify that we want to compile with Java 1.8. So I'm going to paste a fragment here. Of course, I'll post this up to uh, GitHub if you want to copy what I'm doing. So paste, and there we go. One more change is I remembered when I did this base URL, I used HTTP, which was good for when we were testing. But when we're running on a device, it will give us a clear text error. So let me go ahead and change this to HTTPS. And fortunately, our JSON feed does support HTTPS. Now, after a couple of little changes, I snapped a breakpoint and I started in debug mode. And take a look at where the breakpoint stopped. Just on startup, it has stopped where we are receiving our updated plant list. If I pull the emulator over, you can see where the emulator is now. Let me choose F9, tell it to continue. And now let's come back to our emulator. And I'll start typing EAS and take a look. You see that East Himalayan fir, East Indian holly fir, Eastern redbud, these start to autocomplete. I can, see, I can keep typing. And you notice that it continues to autocomplete as I continue to type. Autocomplete is very important for us in Android programming because we like to think about how to make our app as easy as possible to use for our users with the minimal amount of typing and the minimal amount of clicks. So I like where we've ended up here. I'm going to go ahead and commit this and we'll say attach our live data to our autocomplete. Commit and push. And over to GitHub, we see consume plant JSON. 
It's giving us an option to compare and pull request. This is the last change that I want to do for this branch, so I'm going to merge it in just a moment. First though, I've opened up a new window and we can see that the CircleCI pipeline did indeed complete, which is great news because it means all of our unit tests have passed, even though you noticed I made a couple of changes to the retrofit client instance and the model view view model. Seeing that green check gives me some comfort that I haven't broken anything that I've already done. So we'll go ahead and we'll compare and pull request and we'll say uh, merge consume plant JSON. So we've consumed JSON test turned it into objects tested it and wired it up to the ui create pull request we see all of our changes and we see what i like to see which is that it, this can be automatically merged so i go ahead and choose merge pull request confirm merge and if you remember our GitHub and Branches presentation, what we've just done is taken all of these changes that we had on this branch, and we've moved it up to master. So now we sim simply need to synchronize our local IDE to get those changes, and we can always start a new branch. I'll do that offline. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.